everybody. I'm Mo. And I'm Katie, and this is The The Mo Mo and Katie Katie Show. We're two friends from two different worlds, coming together in harmony for one podcast. We're random, ridiculous, and have been taking humor seriously since 2018. Each week, we'll share two positive news stories, a quirky fact, today's weird holiday, a shared experience, and we may even play a game, all while punning the crap out of each other. No, you can't say that. (sighs) Fine. (laughs) It's The The Mo Mo and Katie Katie Show. Show. Gratitude, humor, positivity. Hey, everybody. I'm Mo. And I'm Katie, and this is the, the Mo, Mo and, and Katie, Katie show. show. Welcome aboard the Ridiculous Train. <laughs> <laughs> it has left the station and is careening toward <laughs> just all sorts of craziness here. Today, I'm not guys. even on board yet. Mo is, Mo is in rare form, and we haven't even started, so I'm a little scared. <laughs> just saying. But it is, um, it's Halloween weekend. Uh, uh, uh. Do we time change this weekend or next? Oh, no, next weekend. Next week, next weekend, yeah. Here's what I'm, here's what I'm tired of. Okay. It's like 7 p.m. and it feels like 9 and I'm crawling into bed and it's like, I don't know. Oh, it's just going to get worse. (laughs) I know. This, oh, can't wait to change it. It's going to be like 4 o'clock and it's dark. Going to bed. You only have like like six waking working as sunlight hours once the time yeah, changes. Like, but yes, might as well live next, in Alaska. That's next weekend. Ugh. There you go. <laughs> One hour. Okay. So, so would you um, rather yeah. be? Oh, okay. <laughs> We're not doing that yet. <laughs> All right. Well, the time change coming. Halloween. Wah ah ah. <laughs> Mo's evil laugh are all things going on in the world. (laughs) Moe, tell us what else is going on in the world here at this end of October. Okay. So this one starts in Europe, but ends in the U.S. So we'll start with the U.S. part. So um, um, in 1947, uh, there was these two families that were emigrating from um, (laughs) Italia or Italy to to the United (laughs) States. And so they took this cruise. I think it was not the Mauritania. Saturnia, it was the name of the ship they, they took and the family's okay. home. So there was two young girls on the ship and they, they met, they were uh, just different families that were immigrating. It was like a 10 day mm-hmm. or 14 day trip. And so they met and they just had a good time just starting a new life and stuff like that. And that was the end of that story. Until okay. now, when this uh, one lady started doing Ancestry.com and then her, her son, her oldest son was helping her do Ancestry.com. And he actually came across the ship manifest from when the family had emigrated over. And she remembered this one girl and her, that she had met on the ship. Her name was Yolanda mm-hmm. and kind of a unique name. And she knew the kind of the age because they were about the same age. So the son started doing some research, found the name, did some more research and found out that the two, this lady, Lena, her friend Yolanda, was living like two and a half hours away from her and had been living about two and a half hours away from her. So they did all the super sleuthing and they coordinated a a reunion for the two of them. One lady lived in West Virginia, the other lived in uh, Pennsylvania. And the two of them just met and reconnected after their their friendship. So they're 85 and 84 and they met in 1947 and had not been in touch. I was going to say, what year did they come over? That's crazy. So they've been living two and a half hours from each other. So they were able to have their reunion. So it was just kind of neat. She's like, and they both remembered each other. They both like remembered meeting. Oh, that's so cool. So yeah, thanks to, um, uh, Lena's son, uh, Steve, who was able to to mm-hmm. do all the super sleuthing and get them connected and, and things like that. So, that is really cool. But there was that this. Really cool. There's this one line, and I love this. I love this line. Lena's son uh, said this: "The two ladies are celebrating a momentary friendship that has lasted a lifetime." And I think it's really neat Aww. because you, you know this kind of thing makes me think about you and I. And I just met this um, couple this past weekend. And they're like, I know we just met you, but we feel like we've known you forever. And I just think, you know, it's about quality and not quantity. And so there's these, absolutely. And I love the fact that that's something that we strive to do in this podcast is that we have this momentary distraction to take you away from all the stuff that's going on in the world and then just get you centered yes. on gratitude, humor, and positivity. And I just, when I saw that quote, absolutely. celebrating a momentary friendship that has lasted a lifetime, I just think that's so cool. So I just think that's neat that they're reunited that. and uh, hanging out. and Absolutely. Yeah. 
That's really, really cool. I love that. And and speaking speaking of friendships and bonds and part of the reason we do what we do here with the Mo and Katie show and with the Gratitude, Humor, and Positivity, we've been able to connect with some people who listen and have become part of our tribe of weirdos yep. and people who like we feel like like you know, know us pretty well. Cause we're talking about all kinds of things and we've gotten to know them too. Yeah. So I just, I think about like Elizabeth, I think about, um, I think about Saru and just, just, uh, people who have, have connected. Carrie so. and Juliana. See, Carrie I gets said it right and this Aloha time. Jojo, Jules. just our, yeah. you know, our friends, our, yeah, our I friends have, who I uh, have honey in here. Aloha Jojo. I'm waiting to put your bees honey in there, but nice. For now, nice. Just, I love it. Yeah. But everybody from all kinds of different walks of life that listen, and um, I just think that that's really cool. Yeah. So, yeah. well, and it also wouldn't be the Mo and Katie show unless we had a story about a dog. So my story today is about a dog, and of course, like all good news, it takes place in the UK. In Great Britain. <laughs> <laughs> so this is about an eagle-eyed a pooch. He is a uh, a cavapoo. So part and he King has cavalier, part poodle, part, I part guess. Poo-poo. It's a cavalier um, that's uh, heavily the, constipated, the, I think, a lot of times in some diarrhea. The do- <laughs> Lives in a cave. I don't know. Uh, but the dog's name is is Marlo. And Marlo likes to visit a local London golf course. And what Marlo does is collect golf balls. Oh, no. And so, um, yeah, so Marlo has, has collected a, a, a whole bunch of golf balls. And they decided... Um, you know, they've decided instead of some people who live on golf courses will collect the golf balls and sell them, you know, which is fine. But they decided to use them instead for charity and to benefit uh, to benefit other people. So uh, this dog has collected over 6,000 golf balls. <laughs> Marlo has collected over 6,000 golf balls. And um, they've filled dresser drawers with it. They've, you know, they're, they're storing these all over the place. And um, so... Charles Jefferson is the is the name, which sounds like a president. Charles Jefferson is the is the owner yeah, of, yeah. of Marlowe. Um, Jefferson decided to donate the dro- donate the golf balls to uh, charitable organizations having to do with golf. So they sent them to Kenya's Junior Golf Foundation. Oh, cool! Uh, the South African Disabled Golf Association, the European Disabled Golf Association, um, and India Golf Foundation. Wow. So they've been sending these golf balls to other places that that you know, help people that have other abilities and want to be able to golf. Um, so those are all balls, 6,000 balls that Marlo has collected have gone to help other charities. Now is so, Marlo out there know, like on Mar- the golf course, sure. like as the ball's going into the hole, she's grabbing it or. <laughs> that would probably not do it. No, I think there's like foraging going on, ah. but, but, um, but I love that they're, you know, that they're using that as a chance to reach out to people and, and to, you know, benefit them so that the, or, those organizations don't have to spend money on equipment. So yeah. I just thought that was really That's cool. So- and I'm sure Marlo, like Marlo's happy as can be, yeah. you know, it's like a truffle hunter do, do collecting the ball. Yeah. So you the said the owner's living. name, the owner's name is Charles Jefferson. Yes. And the, the dog is, is what Charles kind of, Jefferson. what kind of poo is the dog? It's a cavapoo, cavapoo, which is a king, which is a king, king cavalier and a poodle. King, I'm guessing king cavalier Charles. I think King Charles Cavalier is in the name. I think you're right. I think named no, after you know the right. royal family. Right. Oh well, I do. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway. <laughs> um, oh, okay. All right. Well, speaking of um, speaking of unicorns, um, I wanted to talk. <laughs> wanted to share speaking my quirky of great fact with you today. <laughs> Now we we talked about unicorns as a quirky fact a long time ago. So this is a quirky fact callback, and then I have a new quirky fact. Do you remember Moe? How many back stomachs? In April. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, that's way back. That's that's how many stomachs again, does a unicorn have? O- okay. OG Mo and Katie show. Um, back in April, on one of my quirky facts was what a group of unicorns is called. Do you happen to remember what a group of unicorns yeah, is called? A fluffer nutter. <laughs> I think that is what you said on the the podcast. So a group of unicorns is actually called a blessing of unicorns. What did I say? You said a fluffer nutter. The blessing. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) So bonus points to any listener who can go back and figure out. I know which episode it is, but if you can go back and find the episode where we talked about unicorns. Ooh, let's give a prize. uh, Feel free to do that. Oh, well, you just gave the answer. Let's let's give a prize. Oh. Well, I I said April. I didn't say which one. Yeah. How do they win the prize? Okay. We want to hear you give a, uh, we want to see a yes, video you of you listening. Us. Yeah. Yes, you have to reenact the fluffer nutter of blessings. You have to grab a friend and one of you is Mo and one of you is Katie. Oh, I like that. 
<laughs> and you have to do a scripted reenactment of the moment that I shared that as the quirky fact. Okay. And I'm not saying which April it is either. It might have been. It might have been the yeah. May April. It might have been the June April. April back. I don't know. Might have been 22. Might have been 21. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe next year. Anyway. Anyway. So I have another quirky fact about uh, unicorns today. Um, one one nation, one country has the unicorn as its national animal. Can you guess maybe what country that might be? Is it? It's not Switzerland. It is. No. Uh, don't tell me. Okay. Finland. No. Am I close though? Is it a Nordic country? Uh, I don't think this is a Nordic country. It's kind of in the same part of the globe though. Like you're like in the right quadrant. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. I, I, I go ahead. It is Scotland. Ah! <laughs> so in 15th century, um, local legend would say that uniform, uniforms, mm -mm, unicorns can purify poisoned water. They believed that. So they made the unicorn their national animal in Scotland in the 15th century. Um, now, has, has the rumor gotten over to that quadrant everywhere. of the world that the unicorn is not a real animal? <laughs> You know, Germany. Just let them believe. Germany actually almost let them have Nessie and unicorns yeah. and whatever they want to have. <laughs> well, Germany almost had the jackalope as a as its um. Oh, there you it go. It wasn't on its flag, but they they went with the eagle. But yeah. the 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 uh, the jackalope was a contender for the German flag. Oh, that's cool. Also, not so, yeah, true. I'm glad that the, I'm, I'm glad that Scotland locked that in. <laughs> da, da, da. Well, more nests you're gonna get right. <laughs> I was gonna say they really made a nest of it. <laughs> Yeah, we got puns in stereo today. <laughs> All right, Moe. Well, speaking of today, tell everybody what today is, please. So I don't know if, if the Scotch people have, um, would they be Scotch or Scotland? Scots. I think. The kilt wearers. Scots. Do you think they have little unicorns that are like uh, uh, stuffed animals, like plush stuffed animals? Probably. Yes. I would imagine. Which is especially appropriate for today because 28 October, every 28 October is Plush Animal Lovers Day. Oh, uh, yeah. well, that's fine. Yeah. I just think that's cool because, and I, I was, I almost zoomed past this as a, as a national day to celebrate. But then I thought you have a stuffed animal in a bag, in a baggie that you're mm -hmm, preserving. I do. You're right. And it has special yeah. value to you. I have a Snoopy dog that I got when I was four years old because I had double hernia surgery and my sister got me mm -hmm. a Snoopy dog. And I have insisted since I got him that I will be buried with him. So Aww, and it was so I funny because I remember how bright white he was. And now it's just like, yeah, <laughs> not so much. But I don't want to wash him. That's on awesome. But yeah, so my dog is is a is a Henry. If any seventies kids out there, you may know mine is this yellow dog, and he has a little name tag that says Henry, and he's yellow with black ears. And I took him with me um, to school on my first day of kindergarten, Aww. and he is in he's in my office in a yeah like in a little. Uh, it's Suff like, suffocating. You know, you get you get sheets. Yeah, well, basically, you get you get sheets, and you have the zipper plastic thing. The sheets come, and he's in like it's like a little case to preserve him. So. Yeah, but um, do you know what the first I, patented I, I, stuffed animal was? The first patented stuffed animal. I mean, I would say maybe something like Snoopy, because Snoopy's been around since the fifth. Maybe rag. Oh, I'm, no, I'm going to say. Well, would Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy? They wouldn't be stuffed animals. Okay, wait. Is it like a character or is it like a, I was going to say teddy bear. <laughs> I'm thinking way too hard about this. 20s. I don't know. Um, I'm going to go with the teddy bear. Mickey Mouse. Peter Cottontail. Peter Rabbit. Easter Bunny. Oh, Peter, Peter Rabbit. Oh, yeah. the Beatrix Potter yeah. books. That's really cool. Yeah, so anyway. I love that. My um my sister has recently taken up crocheting and she's crocheting all these little animals. Yeah. And so she's always sending she gave me the unicorn that she made and um she just did a shark the other day. She's like, "Here, I'm going to send you a picture of my shark." <laughs> this little shark, these little crocheted animals. It's so cute. And I'm like, "Who are you?" She's never crocheted before. <laughs> Does she do that while she's so, driving yeah, so for seven it. hours to, to her chorus rehearsal? Yeah, it's probably not a good idea to do that. I didn't say it was a good idea. I just asked if that's when she does it. <laughs> crocheting and driving at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, And I've, I've always crocheted um, 
And, and she's made like, she's made tons more animals than I have. But anyway, yeah, stuffed. I have some stuffed llamas in my studio. I have a little llama family. And of course I have a, uh, I have two stuffed Kermits as well. So I'm a fan of this. Were you a stuffed animal kid other than just, Snoopy? Just my Snoopy. I mean, I had other stuffed animals. People gave me a lot of, t- I used to have tigers all the time because I really? wanted to change my name to tiger. So um, I love tigers. <laughs> I still love tigers, but. Do you still have the legal proceedings of that in process? Yeah. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Tiger Barrett. Yeah. I like that. T Y G. My first cat was named Tiger. T Y G E R. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, tell us, yeah, what, what stuffed animals do you guys have? Do you have any from childhood that you've hung on to? Yeah. Um, I do like the, you know, when it's sentimental, I think that's pretty, yeah. that's pretty cool. Now my Snoopy so. is uh, free range. He's not in a bag. He's a free range Snoopy. Yes. I don't even know that you crack the bag or zip, you know, put a hole in there for him or nothing. He's Henry's fine. Henry and I have an understanding. He's fine. He's just been holding his breath for 10 decades. <laughs> that would be 100 years. Look at that, 10 Matt. decades? I'm not 100 years old. <laughs> that took me a second to process. Well, I know. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going we're gonna to take a hard shift here and talk about um, something that is seasonal. <laughs> That's right. Put on that turn signal because um, Halloween, of course, is this coming Monday. And um, it's fun. I've been talking to a lot of my students about what they're going. They keep asking me what I'm going to dress up as. And I'm like, I guess I should probably figure out something. Piano teacher. Um, <laughs> one of my kids told me last night. That's what, usually what I say. One of my kids told me last night. I said, well, what should I be um, for Halloween? He goes, just be a witch. Just get a witch hat. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> so um, maybe I'll do you guys have a lot of trick-or-treaters on your, because you live on a cold We do not. Yeah. We live on a dead end street. And in the 16 years we've lived here, I'm telling you, I literally could count the number of trick-or-treaters on one hand that we've had in the 16 years that we've lived here. So, Did you, there's, but, this, um, there's this guy, I don't know if he's on TikTok or Instagram or MySpace, I don't know what it is, but he takes this fake, it's, it's basically a, it's basically like a, I'm spinning, it's basically like a tall doll and yeah. the doll has a Spider-Man uh, uniform on and the arms are holding a plastic bag. And so this guy goes up and he puts this doll and it's, I mean, it's like, I don't know, three or four feet high. Yeah. And uh, he puts the doll in front of someone's door and he rings the doorbell and he stands there and they're like, the people come like, oh, how you doing? Happy, you know, happy Halloween. Are you going to say trick or treat? And, and the guy's like, oh, well, he's deaf. He goes, oh, I'm sorry. And he, they put a candy in. He's like, thank you. And they shut the door and he picks up the doll and just walks off, right? <laughs> so like this one guy, he goes and there was just, I felt so bad because these are not the pranks that I like because it, it yeah, I just don't like it anyway. But he he puts the doll down, and the and uh, there's a little girl, and like the grandpa come, and and he goes, oh, can you say uh, trick or treat? And he goes, well, he's deaf. And he goes, oh, you're deaf. And the grandpa squats down and is like, how are you? And he's doing. He goes, do you want more? And he's doing like sign language to the guy. Oh my gosh. And, and he's like, well, and he's shy, you know. So so the little girl finally oh puts candy gosh. in there, and the guy takes the doll and puts it over his shoulder and just walks off. And the guy's like, oh my gosh. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't all that to say is we don't have trick-or-treaters uh you know we live on like three acres in the back of a farm country so yeah. but um yeah i always like the ones that they would like someone would sit in a scarecrow outfit and and put the yeah. bowl of candy and then like <laughs> scare them like i love that come up and scare them yeah you love that <laughs> so speaking of being scared and we've talked about we've talked about halloween before on the podcast so um in the vein of things i don't like <laughs> practical <laughs> jokes not that i don't like Football. Yeah. Not not a huge fan. But I also do not like scary movies. Um I know. I, or haunted house. I haven't done many haunted houses. Matter of fact, I don't know that I've ever I don't know that I've ever really done. What is it you don't like? You house. don't like being scared or you don't like being does a little pee come out when someone startles you? Or? <laughs> well <laughs> I'm over fifty now, so all bets are off with that. Yeah, it depends. But um, <laughs> just stay poised through this uh, little segment here, okay? No, you're in the wrong with that. So. <laughs> come on, come on, you got one more. No, I just was going to say, I mean, like, uh, I used to go to the Mayan ruins. I'm like, is that Mayan? And they're like, no, it's here. And <laughs> um, I don't know that I would mind a haunted house. I don't think I'd want people to, like, grab my arm or something. Where would you like to be grabbed? I, I, <laughs> But honestly, I don't think I've ever it's done like a legit. This is not safe. Before. This is, no what? So, <laughs> so I want to know, Moe, Have you what? What is your haunted house experience? Have you done some haunted houses? Yes. Do you like them? I I don't. Yeah, I mean, I like them. I 
I like like it's, it's and it's it's it also applies to like scary movies. I don't like the boo kind of constantly. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what I do Jump like. I, I do like because I'm the person who has my ears plugged and my eyes covered and just I don't know. That's my little cave that I go into. Yeah, but um, I like the like there was one I can't remember what movie I think it was Metro with um Eddie Murphy, but it was one of those things where and I always expect it now like. Um, someone opens up the medicine cabinet. So you got the mirror and they open up the medicine cabinet and they get something out. And then when they shut it, there's somebody behind them, you know, uh, or, yeah, or, 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 or here's what I really like too, is medicine cabinet, the mirror, they open it up, gets it on and the music starts building. Right. It's like, duh. And then they shut the door right as the music crescendos and peaks and there's nothing behind them. It's just like, Oh, I shut the mirror. It's just funny yeah. how to me, it's funny how the music can change things. Um, but I sure, like those, sure. those false scares too, but. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. like scary movies. One of my, <laughs> but I don't like. So, hey, I don't single, I, hang on. I don't like stupid scary movies, like you know the chainsaws and that just stupid stuff. But yeah, just gratuitous. Now my my sister loves them. As a matter of fact, she and her friends uh, had they used to do this. What was it called? Was it Tuesday Terror or yeah, something they like that? Would watch a movie they together. All would get on Zoom and start their movies at the same time. And co- now the comments. I love the commentary. Yeah. I think the commentary. And when we, you and I were together with my sister one time. It was a Friday the 13th that we were together and they were showing Friday the 13th and the two of you were doing a commentary like live and it was hilarious. But um, even the suspenseful stuff. So there's a movie called What Lies Beneath with. um, That's Sandra Bullock. Um, I I, know. I can't remember. Gerard Depadu. Somebody's somebody. Under the (laughs) giant. Somebody's yelling at the podcast right now. Yeah. What lies beneath? But it's the it's the rear window plot. So it's the rear window where the the neighbor you know is up to something and the neighbor's being nosy. There's one scene where um, the the neighbor I can't even remember who the actors are. They're looking through binoculars. I want to say is Harrison Ford in it? Yeah. Yep. I'm not yep. sure. Is he okay? They're looking at the neighbors with the binoculars and they look over and the guy's like doing something in the kitchen and then they look away. And when they bring the binoculars back, the guy is staring right at him and I jump <laughs> and I know it's coming and it's not really that scary, but every time I, love that. I jump, <laughs> I love that. every time, and it's, my sister's laughing because one time we were watching it together and I go, here comes the part he's going to be looking at, he's going to look, ah! she goes, you knew that was going to happen. Why did you scream? So yeah, what I, just, I-, I can't do gore. I can't yeah, do I, I, um, yeah, the final good. destination movies. Oh, can't do it. Mm-mm. Oh, they're terrible. Never heard of it. Yeah, yeah I just, I, I will say there is, I think I've told you one of my pet peeves that I don't tell anybody. I don't actually know that I've told mm-hmm. you. Have I? Hmm. This is very, we should cue some sentimental music, the very special moment on the moment Katie show. Have I told you, uh, do you know what my, like the one thing that just ticks me off that I don't tell people? I think so. What is it? Is it the chair thing? Oh, damn it. You don't um, like people to. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get edited out. Welcome back from edit okay, number three. Um, <laughs> no, actually, there is. Because I told secrets. <laughs> there's one scary thing that I'm pretty sure I haven't told anybody. There's one fear I have um, based on like a, a scary setup, and I won't tell anybody what it is. So. Because you were afraid they're going to set it up and scare mm-hmm. you? I wouldn't do that. You know I wouldn't do that to you, Mom. Yeah, but I, I used to tell one person, everybody tells 10 people, and then. You get positive Yelp reviews and then everybody knows. So let's definitely not put it out on Word Spotify of mouth. and Apple yeah. Podcasts and <laughs> Google Pods. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I just I just have to avoid and even some of the commercials during this time of year. Just I just Yeah. Like I can't watch, so like, watch the commercials. Does anybody watch the Chucky doll? Like I that I mean, it's an ugly doll. I get it. But mm-hmm. I, I mean, are we I don't know. I mean, I guess Toy Story has the same concept where the the things are coming mm-hmm. to life, but in a very different vein, yeah. you know, like less <laughs> death and, and blood. But um, <laughs> but but you have to say, I mean, Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head, they got dismembered. So you know, Toy Story That's isn't true. all that non gratuitous. Or That's true. So That's anyway. very true. We, and you know, the funny thing is that I we I, I did a I did an escape room one time in Ocean City with with um, my friends Sarah, Amy, and Jess. And and Jess <laughs> Jess does not like to be scared. She does not like you know. And so when it, but this doesn't scare me at all. Like the room was dark. We had to find flashlights. The second room we went into had a had a casket in it. And just candles. As soon as we opened the door, Jess grabbed my arm. And she's like, "I'm not going in." <laughs> but that's that stuff doesn't bother me. Yeah. 
um, if it's like, you know, that it's just, it's, it's all like a means to an end. It's all part of the escape room. Yeah. Um, and then we did another escape room one time where the guy told us, he said, look, there's going to be an actor in there at one point. And I was with the same group of people and Jess goes, if you jump out and scare me, she's like, I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> so the part, we got to the part in the escape room where the guy was showing up. And so he's in a, he's in another room. So we hear, all of a sudden we hear, <clears throat> Help! Help! <laughs> <laughs> Jess goes. Jess goes. Thank you. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> so yeah, I, but I, I mean, and I know haunted houses can be silly. They can be. I mean, there's some you go into like where you have to give them like you can't hold them liable if you get like hurt or something. Like, yeah. um, no, I, I, I'd rather do an escape room, something smart, than just scaring yeah. for the sake yeah. of scaring. So, but then there's corn mazes. That's a whole other. That's a whole other thing. Those aren't scary. We though. need to go back to the corn maze. I know they house. they were just oh. advertising. They've got uh, they've got tickets for Thursday and Friday. So they that, that place oh, is packed. God. Are Every you guys going to go? It's packed. I don't know. It's packed. Yeah, so. it's like a Jurassic theme this year. I think. Yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, if, if you if you guys are looking, if you live in the kind of the southern Maryland, well, not southern Maryland, but like Annapolis area, um, yeah, it's it real is good the corn maze. just called the Maryland corn maze. Is that what it's called? Yep. Yeah, and up here we have uh, Beachmont Camp has a really good corn maze. That's cool. So. Yeah, that's fun. So those are all the Halloween things. So, again, would love to hear your yeah, stories. Tell us, are you dressing up like on the 31st? Are you going to call in sick to work? Put on a witch hat candy? and just uh... ride the broom? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I really would like to know. This is a question I've been asking my students. Uh, they'll come in my studio and I'll say, I have a very serious question to ask you. Candy corn. Yes or no? I don't know why people hate candy corn. It's just, it just tastes like sugar. It's good. Go eat a packet of sugar then. Well, you have, what do you have? Candy corn and peanuts, right? Yeah. Yeah, they are waxy. Yeah. Well, then get a pay. Roker says they taste like candles. (laughs) Fair. Al, we want you to come on our podcast and explain, explain yourself. (laughs) Yeah. Explain yourself. All right. So in the vein of nothing having to do with anything else today. Speaking of unicorns. random. (laughs) Speaking of pencils, okay, we're gonna I'm ready. play a game. I'm ready. Okay, we're gonna play a game. Um, so this is a game that I recently I recently picked up, and my family we went to a oh. wedding last weekend, and congratulations! It was all it was all of us. Well, I'm not the one that got married, but thank you. Okay, um, okay. it was all five of us crammed into our our Honda Passport. And if you have ever seen my family, I am by far the smallest person in my family. My boys are all over six two. Um, so I knew for two hours I was going to be crammed in the back seat between my oldest son and my youngest son. So I brought games <laughs> to play. And one of the games I brought was this Would You Rather card game. And these are kind of wacky. They're kind of wacky questions. So I sent Mo some cards and I've got a card and we're just going to discuss our, uh, our answers. Would you like to go first, Mo? You look very excited. I would. Well, I guess my first question is the word naive is the umlaut okay. over the A or the I? I think it should be over the I. Oh. Never mind then. Yeah, so what's interesting about okay. these cards is they have categories. So there's pain and okay. fear and discomfort, mm-hmm. appearance and embarrassment, ethics and intellect, and random. So I just thought that was interesting. Okay. So would you like to yeah. would you like to pick your category? Would you just like me to go down them? No, just go ahead and pick a pick a let's just do questions back and forth. Okay. So go ahead and ask me a question. Okay, I'm gonna ask you question. something from the pain, fear, and discomfort category, if you don't mind. Oh, good. Would I'm, you rather I'm so excited about that? Would you rather Sleep next to an incredibly light sleeper. Even minor noises or movements will wake them up. Or okay. next to somebody who hogs the covers. Mm, am I allowed to get my own covers? Listen, it's would you rather sleep? <sighs> I Probably someone who hogs the covers, I guess. Because then if I'm afraid of and waking someone explain. else up, I would... Well, you're supposed to explain with this game. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. I don't, I just got the cards. I don't have the rules. <laughs> well, we're making up the rules as we go along. Clearly. <laughs> Are you new? No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, probably um, someone who hawks the covers. Why? All right. Why? So my question to you. Why? It, it, well, because I think I secretly feel like I would sneak and get my own blanket somewhere. So I would be okay. No, I'm sorry. But I would cr- hate to like. Yeah. The correct answer was because you could up. cuddle with them. So if they hog oh. the cover, you cuddle with them. All right. Go ahead. I cuddle, point. With, I cuddle okay. with Bo. He's a good, he's a good sleep buddy. Okay. So uh, one okay. point Mo, right. zero Katie. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, this is in the random category, Moe. Perfect. As a spouse taking a new name, would you rather have your new name be Doodoo 
or Kleppner Mahangel German and Mainzen. <laughs> Is there a, can I hyphen? Klepp the Heimann churches? Kleppner, Kleppner, Meyer, Helg, Helgen, Hel, Helgen. I'm going to stop you right there. Manson. I'm going to go with uh, option number two, doo-doo. <laughs> Mo doo-doo. <doo-doo. laughs> yeah. All right. Wait, what'd you do in the bathroom? Ah, Mo doo-doo. That's, Who's in the bathroom? Mo doo-doo. <laughs> that's a good conversation Mrs. starter. I like that. <laughs> it is. All right, next one. Okay. Would you rather look healthy and strong but actually be extremely weak such that most lifting physical labor and some sports are humiliating to you, or would you rather look really unhealthy but actually be in tip-top shape? Uh, probably the second one, look unhealthy and be in tip-top shape. Okay. Because then you surprise people, like, by how strong you are. Yeah, they're like, hey, look at that doo-doo. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Would you rather try to defend yourself from a really mad attacking male chimpanzee while you are armed with only a basket, a, ba- a baseball bat and a trash can lit as a shield or a flight of attacking or fight off an attacking flock of angry geese with a slingshot and a pile of pebbles? <laughs> That's oddly specific. <laughs> So I, I guess I'd go. I guess I'd, attacking chimpanzee with a with a baseball bat and a trash can lid, or angry angry geese with a slingshot and pebbles. Yeah, I'm not going to take the foul option. I'm going to take the uh, angry chimpanzee with the um, the noisemaker uh, bat and dr- garage okay. garbage can. And then if the okay. geese come okay. after you, the chimpanzee, I could use it as a shield because they're going to poop. I'm just telling you. And honestly, chimpanzees, well, when they're mad. doo-doo. Well, I know. But chimpanzees, <laughs> and it's part of assimilation. Like, oh, the doo-doo family, they take their poop and they throw it at you. And then I think I could use they the shield. Do. Or I could use the the bat as, you know, like, you're going to throw your poop you at me? You could play poop ball. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's an office reference. You could play poop ball. <laughs> All right. All right. It's, uh, I'm going to go to a new card, but it is your turn to ask the question. Yeah, I, I already know the answer to this. Would you rather okay. do without supermarkets or... Do without convenience stores and fast food restaurants. Don't even think about it. I'll answer for you. Well, the, I know the grown up in me says. <laughs> says I, I'm not asking the grown up in you. I'm asking you. <laughs> okay, so we're going to yeah, get rid I of supermarkets. Fast food. She needs a Chick fil A and Starbucks. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> okay, would you rather have your house hit once every six months by graffiti vandals or once every two weeks by toilet paper vandals? Toilet paper vandals. But it's every two weeks. That's all right. I'm just going to leave it up. And they'll the, come the by and they'll like, only oh. every six months. Yeah, but uh, toilet paper, I mean, you know, a couple of years ago, toilet paper was a it. rare commodity. I'd sell that stuff. That's true. I, would resell- That's I mean, true. I'm sorry. Hello, we're the doo-doo family. Kind of asking for it. <laughs> With a name like doo-doo. <laughs> okay. All right, it's your turn. Would you rather have no reflection in mirrors or never show up in photographs? Huh. I'll go with no reflection in mirrors. Okay, so vampire. Okay. Something like a vampire, yeah. I'm just going to say. <laughs> Would you rather carry a 70-pound backpack for 10 miles or a 30-pound briefcase for 10 miles? 70-pound backpack or 30-pound briefcase. Which is the shorter distance? They're both 10 miles, but I think the point is you can put the backpack on your back. That's the exactly. briefcase you have to carry yeah. with your hands. Yeah, I don't want to carry a briefcase. So you'll go 70-pound backpack for 10 miles? Yeah, I want the backpack. Hands-free. Hands-free. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. This one I'm actually kind of curious about. Would you rather be forced okay. to watch The Sound of Music continuously for 48 hours <laughs> or <laughs> drive cross-country with Barry Manilow singing on the radio the whole time? Oh, I'll, oh I'm, a, I'm a Manilow fan of I will take that in a heartbeat. I love Barry Manilow. I wouldn't mind the sound. Can I do both? <laughs> You know, I guess here's a better question, and this would be actually for Matt. Would Matt rather be forced to sit next to you watching this sound of music continuously for 48 hours because you know you're going to sing and probably dance and make him do the puppet show and and one of the goat herds? Or would would Matt rather drive cross country with you and Barry Manilow singing Mm. on the radio the whole time? I think he's going to he go. He would probably take Sound of Music for, because it's forty-eight he's hours. Not a big, you can't drive whole cross country in forty-eight hours, so he's going to no, go for the shorter. No, and he's not a he's not a he's not a fan of low like I am. Okay. So fair enough. I don't know how he feels about the Sound of Music after forty-eight hours. I probably would know though. <laughs> yeah, no, I think he's he's going right. to want to get it over with. So, um, 
Would you rather, these are, these are strange. Would you rather, no, nah, I don't like, I don't like any of those. I'm going to go do a new card. Um, would you, in a crowded movie theater, would you rather sit behind three very tall people or in a, in front of a group of loud giggling people? Oh, good God. I, I'll, I'll listen to the film and I'll sit behind the tall people. <laughs> There'd be some throat punching if the people oh, behind you were They wouldn't be giggling, giggling for long. I'll tell you that right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Put them in a car with Barry Manilow. All right, All right let's do uh, one let's more. do one more each. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Ooh. Would you? Okay, interesting. Would you rather be able to bathe every day, but have to wear the same set of unwashed clothes and underwear, mm. or give up your right to bathe but be able to change clothes every day? Hmm. So clean body, dirty clothes. Or mm. clean clothes, dirty body. I I guess the second one. I mean, I'm not thrilled about either, but I guess the second. Well, it's kind of it's kind of the, the the dilemma of this game. That's kind of what they're trying to do is pose really. <laughs> it's kind equally. of the point. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess that one. Okay, last question for you. Okay. Would you rather live today with every necessity provided for, but never again know luxury? Or go back in time a hundred years and be the richest person in the world. The first one. I'm not. Yeah. I don't need luxury stuff. And honestly, the things that are necessity to me are, you know, having a butler, a masseuse. Um, yeah. So those are necessities to me. So you're saying you would. <laughs> you said you would live with necessities, and you consider those necessities. You'd live with those now. Yeah. But not luxury. Yeah, I don't need like a private jet. I'm not crazy. <laughs> Just a butler, not a private. Chef. Well, and a masseuse. I don't you know. I, I don't know. It depends on what the butler, <laughs> how he's with his hands. And okay, stuff, so. fair enough. So, uh, so yeah. So we've got a uh, we've got a quartet weekend coming up. So these might make an appearance at the at the All quartet right. weekend. So you've been warned, girls. <laughs> that's right that's right all right well friends you've got a ton of calls to action today you we want to know about you know candy corn that's probably the most important one no one cares about candy all the corn. things halloween haunted house candy corn candy is like the unicorns. halloween equivalent of black jelly beans at east oh yep. not even close i disagree all right so i'm gonna share a gratitude quote today. And I'm kind of on this Roy T. Bennett kick. So Roy T. Bennett, I we're going to get you to listen to the podcast because we're using your quotes from this book, The Light and the Heart. It just sounds really fantastic. So this is another quote, same guy, same book. Being grateful doesn't mean that everything is necessarily good. It just means that you can accept it as a gift. Don't just learn experience. Love it. I like it. Smart guy, right? Yeah. I like it. Like Thanks, it. Roy. That's some good stuff. Thank you, Roy. That's all I have, Mo. Oh, okay. <laughs> Welcome to edit number seven. Oh, no. <laughs> I will close this out by saying, be grateful, keep laughing, and stay positive. And thank you for listening. And have a happy Halloween. Wah, ah, ah. <laughs> we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye. If you made it this far, congrats. Woohoo! You are part of our elite tribe of weirdos, and there aren't too many people who like us like you do. But that's where we need your help. Rate, subscribe, follow, and share this podcast. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Follow us on social media and tag us in any of your Mo and Katie show interactions. Because we give you homework using the hashtag TMKSPod. The Mo and Katie Show has been produced, edited, scripted, recorded, catered, directed, and engineered by Mo and Katie. Our theme song is It Is Fun by HookSounds.com. Here's wishing you gratitude, humor, and positivity. Until we see you next time.